Welcome to Just a Minute. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. My name is Nicholas Parsons, and as the minute waltz fades away once more, it's my huge pleasure to welcome our many listeners, not only in this country, but around the world, but also to welcome to the program four talented, dynamic, diverse personalities who are going to show their skill with words and language as they try and speak on a subject that I give them, and they do that without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. And those four stalwart characters are seated on my right, Paul Merton and Charles Collingwood, and seated on my left, Jenny Eclair and Stephen Fry. Please welcome all four of them. Thank you. Thank you. Seated beside me is Sarah Sharp, who's going to help me keep the score and blow a whistle when the 60 seconds have elapsed. And this particular edition of Just a Minute is coming from the Radio Theatre in the heart of Broadcasting House. And let's begin the show this week with Paul Merton. What a lovely subject to begin a show with. My idea... Of bliss. Paul, <laughs> 60 seconds if you want them. Starting now. Let us enjoy the pure <laughs> silence that is bliss. What <laughs> 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 Charles, you challenged right away. Hesitation. There was a hesitation. Only if I started again, would it be hesitation? Why? <laughs> a full stop. <laughs> <laughs> it was meant to be blissful. Well, it was. Oh. It was divine. I'm, I feel bad about it. So no, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't feel bad, because those are the rules of the game, Charles. Thank you. Thank and so you have a point for a correct challenge. You take over the subject, which is my idea of bliss, and you have 56 seconds starting now. My idea of bliss is taking my clothes off and getting into my warm bathroom and in the soapy suds, lying back for at least 45 minutes. And during that time, my wife coming to the door, knocking and entering with a large gin and tonic, placing it by my side and saying, give me a shout when you're ready for me to dry you, darling, won't you? <laughs> Unfortunately... Uh, Stephen challenge. I was my darling wife and darling, won't you? Yes, you see, the two darling. Yes, obviously, Charles, when you think of her, you couldn't resist saying darling It's again. all it's darling with me. Yes, yes. that's right. <laughs> Only because you can't remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> I've had so many. <laughs> Stephen, correct challenge, you have a point. You have 34 seconds, and the subject is My Idea of Bliss. My idea of bliss is Sir Arthur Edward Drummond Bliss, who was master of the Queen's music, made that, uh, I think, in 1953. He was a composer of some note. I remember him best for his score of The Things to Come, a marvellous corder movie of 1936, which is all one word, fortunately not a repetition. And he <laughs> was succeeded by... Uh, Martin... Paul Challenge. There was a slight hesitation there, didn't you? There notice? was a slight oh, hesitation. <laughs> <laughs> You were so keen to tell us it wasn't a repetition. Yeah. <laughs> you hesitated. Well, I just suddenly thought I'd said 19 twice, and I thought... Oh, I know, no. this is what happens in this yeah. game, isn't it? Yes, it strips you up as you go, Paul, you've come in, we've got the subject back again, and there are 13 seconds available. My idea of bliss starting now. It's to be playing just a minute here in London in front of a magnificent, intelligent <laughs> audience at Broadcasting House. <laughs> Professionally associated with this show is a constant source of bliss to me when I look around. Oh. <laughs> well, they all got points in that round, except Jenny, but it doesn't matter, she's going to speak quite soon. Uh, Paul, Paul <laughs> got that not? extra one, because in this game, whoever's speaking when the whistle goes gets an extra point, so Paul's in a commanding lead at the end of the first round. He has two points, the others have one. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jenny Eclair, will you begin the next round? The subject here is loyalty cards. Can you tell us something about that subject in this game, starting now? I don't have any loyalty cards because I am a retail whore. That said, once, when I was doing a radio programme in Notting Hill, I used to stop at a coffee shop and they gave me a loyalty card every morning when I popped in for my latte. They'd stamp the card and I was about to fill it up when I was sacked. Do you know that was the price of loyalty? I was furious, not just at the fact that I had been sacked from quite a lucrative oh. job. Oh. Double sacking, double sacking, yes, and I, I haven't filled my loyalty card, so no free latte. <laughs> what a miserable experience. I know, but all the audience <laughs> spotted the repetition, and Stephen pressed his buzzer first. Oh, I'm sorry. So, yes, matter. there it's we are. It's a game, if you want to play it like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Darling, if we don't play it like that, there's going to be no fun at all, is there? 
Uh, Stephen, correct challenge. Another point to you. 34 seconds available. Loyalty cards starting now. Well, they seem to abound these days, don't they? You know what's so good about Sainsbury's? Keeps the scum out of Waitrose. That's what I think. <laughs> anyway, whenever I'm shopping, they seem to present me with these extraordinary questions. Do you have a nectar card? No, I don't. I never will have one. I don't want such a thing. I, in fact, have no idea what it is. Some kind of loyalty card, I am told. I think the idea is the more you spend, the greater the amount of subsidiary goods you can earn thereby. This seems to be an ancient principle. <laughs> <laughs> On this occasion, Stephen Fry was speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point. He's now taking the lead ahead of Paul and uh, Charles Collingwood. Will you begin the next round? I think I know why this subject's been chosen for you, but we can all chat on it. The Battle of Trafalgar. Charles, tell us something about that famous battle in this game starting now. As you all know, the Battle of Trafalgar was in 1805, and Nelson was in charge. Sadly, he was dressed as a little strutting turkey cock. The Spaniards espied him, shot him, and after a little kiss from Hardy, Collingwood took over and won the Battle of Trafalgar for the nation. And I am quite angry that out here, not far from where we're sitting, is a huge statue to the aforementioned admiral instead of my... How oh, dare anybody interrupt me? <laughs> Who could have been? Who, the man sitting yeah. beside you, Paul Merton, challenged well, yeah, you. As you said, aforementioned admiral, it was a repetition of admiral. You admiral, you mentioned admiral Lord Nelson at the beginning. Are you sure? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm quite sure. <laughs> okay. Darling, have a go. darling boy, we couldn't help but hear every word you said. Well, it was important. <laughs> Very important. But I don't, th I don't think you've yet established that the reason you were going on about Collingwood is that you are related to him. Of course. I mean, of course. They, all of the world knows that. It wasn't just the name. <laughs> no, 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 no. Right, I'm, right, yes. I'm so important. It's on the illegitimate side, though. I on absolutely. Completely. <laughs> Completely, and the slightly not frightfully bright side. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paul, the correct challenge, you have 34 seconds. The Battle of Trafalgar, Paul, 34 seconds, starting now. Recent evidence shows that Collingwood was a French spy. Who did everything he could. <laughs> Charles, you've challenged. That evidence. is deviation. It has to... <laughs> oh. There can be no oh. way that Collingwood was a French spy. <laughs> And you can tell by the reaction mm. call from the audience mm. that they're on my side. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pity he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> recent evidence. The British <laughs> Library, recent evidence. It's getting a bit like any questions. <laughs> no, it isn't. I mean, it's much funnier. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But that's not much of a recommendation, though, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Charles, I mean, we, we, we go with your passion about this, yeah. but, I mean, he can say that yes. he was a spy yeah. without having every evidence. He might go on to prove that he was. Do I get an extra point for sympathy, then? Uh, no, you don't. <laughs> oh. That's what you get for sympathy. <laughs> I'll give you a point for passion. Thank you. Oh, oh there we are. Oh, points for passion. <laughs> They're Points finding out about us now, Nicholas. <laughs> right, there we are. <laughs> so, Paul, you have a correct <laughs> challenge. 30 seconds are still available. The Battle of Trafalgar starting now. As they woke up on the morning of the battle, looked out towards the sea, they could find several ships coming... <laughs> Uh, Jenny challenged. Well, it was the Battle of Trafalgar. He said it was out at the sea. It's in Trafalgar Square where they had the battle, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Because it was named after the Battle of Trafalgar. In Trafalgar Square. <laughs> <laughs> they do have battles there now, but they're much more sort of... Um, Saturday night, the boys and girls. That's right, yes. <laughs> On the outcome Political pops. battles. It was a lovely idea of yours, Jenny. Yes. So we'll I was being ironic and not just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to give think... you a bonus point because we enjoyed your interruption. All right? But Paul was interrupted. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> And he gets a point for that, mm. and um, 23 <laughs> seconds still available. The Battle of Trafalgar starting now. I can hear Charles making low grunting noises as somebody else actually takes on a subject he wanted to speak about with the great passion. Uh, Jenny Challenge. Slight deviation, because he's talking about Charles and not the Battle of Trafalgar. So the Charles was talking about the subject about the Trafalgar. He made it quite clear, darling. He said he was talking about the Battle of Trafalgar <laughs> with great passion. Uh, which he was. All right. <laughs> it was a good attempt, but it was... <laughs> Is there a gas leak? <laughs> uh, Paul, 16 seconds still available. The Battle of Trafalgar starting now. Smoke curled above the waves. Each sailor looked in the eyes of each other and thought to themselves... <laughs> Stephen. Uh, each looked in the eyes of each other. Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 
I don't know whether you're applauding the fact that Stephen spotted it or you're mocking Paul for what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Very strange mixed reaction. I was painting a picture. Yeah. 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 Well, well, it was a wonderful it, picture, actually, it was, but it was yeah. an incorrect one in just a minute. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Stephen, correct challenge. Ten seconds are now available for you on the Battle of Trafalgar starting now. The 21st of October, just after six o'clock, or 1805 as it's better known, is a day <laughs> in the annals of British history. Uh, Paul Challenge. Well, just after six o'clock isn't better known... As 1805? As 1805, but it, it's... <laughs> not really, cos it could be sort of 1801, 1802... <laughs> but, you, Nicholas... The battle is better known I as I think this is one of those difficult decisions one has to make, but uh, logically you're right, aren't you? Of course I am. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't be wasting no, the that time. The date is just after six, or better known as... The date of Trafalgar is definitely better known as 1805. Yes, yeah. better known than 1805, which is the time on the 24-hour clock. Yeah. Yeah. Stephen, you have an incorrect challenge. You keep the subject. Oh, Battle of Trafalgar, much. three seconds, oh. starting now. A little touch of Nelson can never do any harm to a nation's <laughs> reputation. <laughs> Right, so at the end of that round, Paul and Stephen both got um, points. Uh, Stephen for speaking as the whistle went, and they are now equal in the lead, just ahead of Charles Collingwood and Jenny Eclair. And Stephen, it's your turn to begin. Uh, the subject here, I'm sure it's been chosen for you because it's, um, well, it's been chosen for there's a challenge to any of them in this game infinity. Oh, my lord. Infinity. There's a deathly hush. <laughs> <laughs> As Stephen starts to talk on the subject of infinity, beginning now. Well, infinity isn't so much a substance or an object or a fact or a thing, so much as... Uh, a... Charles Charles, lots of oars. Oh. Oh, yes. It was a sort of... Yes, I mean, almost rhetorical... infinity. Oh, aren't you allowed to do little words? No, what, no, not no, seven no, times. No, no. <laughs> not seven times. Oh, OK. No, no, not three or four times. Can I count like his thus? Uh, no, yes. Can I? Not the no, Are you no, giving me permission to count how many times he says the when he wins the challenge? If you manage to do that, yes. OK. All right. right. <laughs> You'll join me all this time. So get a bit ugly. No. no. But one does have to use some discretion and some uh, creative intelligence about yeah. this. Right, so, but three successive oars like that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. well, you, you stuck your oar in. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, who challenged the oars? Yes, it was yeah. Charles Collingwood. <laughs> Infinity is with you now, Charles. 56 seconds, starting now. This is a very difficult subject to define, but surely we can all remember when we were at school doing long division and you would come to a sum which would never end. Somehow you felt it would, and all day you would try to make it come... Oh, uh, Jenny challenged. Two woods. Yeah. Two woods. Two woods. Yeah. 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 Infinity. Yeah, well, at least it wasn't Stephen counting the bees. Yeah, no, sure. <laughs> and Jenny, infinity is now with you, and there are 41 seconds starting now. To infinity and beyond, said Buzz Lightyear in the children's film Toy Story and became the most popular children's gift that year. Uh, children's oh. oh. Stephen, you got in there Sorry, on the know. children, and so you have 31 seconds. Infinity, back with you, Stephen, starting now. As I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by Charles Goddingwood. Infinity is essentially a concept, a notion. It has no real meaning as such. However, the great mathematician Srinivasa Ramanujan, who came from Tamil Nadu and had a great collaboration with J.H. Hardy, of course, in the early part of the last century, wrote on Convergent Infinite Series, one of the most astounding and interesting series of... Uh, <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> right. So she's got back at you. <laughs> so, Jenny, let's hear what it was. He hesitated. Yeah, I did, yeah. oh, he did hesitate. Yeah, oh, so I thought did. He, he repeated so something did. as well. I thought you were going for that. Doesn't matter. It's seven seconds. You have a correct challenge. You have a point. You have infinity starting now. I do love an infinity pool. They always say in the brochures, swim in these crystal waters and as your <laughs> <laughs> so Jenny Eclair was then speaking as the whistle went gained that extra point for doing so she's leapt forward uh, she's still in third place no, but she's leapt she's only one point behind Paul she's two points behind Stephen and uh, she's two points ahead of Charles that's the situation as we go you couldn't really care less could you <laughs> uh, Paul Merton we're back with you to begin and the subject is party games Will you tell us something about that subject in this game, starting now? We used to play party games when I was growing up in the family. One was Blind Man's Buff, you tie. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Why did you say that? I just thought he was talking rubbish, and he wasn't. <laughs> I, and my little... <laughs> <laughs> you 
<laughs> and because I'm getting old, my little finger twitched. And so I... it a road to Damascus moment when suddenly I stopped talking rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> But it all became crystal clear. Yeah. It's usually just, such a safe just bet. Just pretend it's never happened. Yeah. Anyway, it was an incorrect challenge. And right. uh, Paul has a point, of course. Sorry. And he has 55 seconds still on party games starting now. The idea, once you were blinded, to walk around and find where other people were staying. Sometimes they were as far away as Lowestoft, which in <laughs> public transport would mean you would have to take an awful long time to get there. I remember once my parents, in a mean streak, decided to run road map my way to Aberdeen. <laughs> Stephen challenge. It was two ways. That's right. Yes, it, yeah. sort of, it, it didn't make any sense at all that time. <laughs> <laughs> but having sort of won the challenge of Charles last time, nobody wanted to call me on it. <laughs> that was too right, there. so correct challenge, Stephen. 34 mm. seconds available. Party games with you, Stephen, starting now. I suppose liberal sardines, conservative, pin the tail on the uh, donkey. Poor challenge. Oh. Was there a hesitation? There was it hesitation. was really, wasn't yes. it? I was sort of gathering my thoughts yes. and yes. I left too long a space between words, which you. sometimes mm. seems to be hesitation. Mm. <laughs> it is, actually depends on the way yes. yeah. you listen. <laughs> Still, there you go. For the correct challenge, 30 seconds available. Party games starting now. When Howard Wilson became leader of the Labour Party in the early 1960s, there was much joshing for position. There were people like, for example, I can't really think of any of them. <laughs> <laughs> what a bizarre approach to the subject. I've no, no interest in that subject. <laughs> Oh, oh there must have been so memorable in his videos. <laughs> uh, Stephen, you challenged first. Hesitation, we all recognised <laughs> it. Party games with you. 20 seconds starting now. Haydn Seek, not one of his better known symphonies, dedicated <laughs> to Anne Ritzar, I suppose. No, that's a game, of course, isn't it? Played by children commonly in country houses where one child goes off to conceal themselves in a small area, niche or alcove. Um, Paul Challenge. Did you say that Hide and Seek was commonly carried out in country houses? No. <laughs> It's played in other places as well. No, but it's commonly done there too. I didn't say only in country houses. Oh, I see. I no. misunderstood. No, he did. He didn't no. say only. He didn't no. say no. commonly played there. It is commonly played there, is but it? not yeah. only. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not so much fun in a bed sit now. No. There's got to be room, hasn't there? It's either the wardrobe or under the bed. <laughs> I mean, that was what was in his mind. Obviously, there's more space and more yeah, scope absolutely. in a country house. Quite no, right. it wasn't, and it must be fair, it was an incorrect challenge. Uh, six seconds still with you, uh, Stephen. Party games are starting now. Another pastime often pursued in rural seats is Moriarty. Uh, um, Jenny challenge. Rural, two rurals. No, it, no, no, no. I, rural I, as before. I said it, I knew I was wrong, and I'm really, <laughs> yeah. I'm really sorry. Oh. I just really wanted to tell some um, stories about when I used to play oh, party on. games. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let, let, let Stephen finish and yeah, have your right. party games afterwards. An incorrect challenge. <laughs> Two seconds ago, party game, Stephen, starting now. Someone is it and another person... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Seaman was speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point. He's increased his lead over Paul Merton and the other two. And Jenny, what was your party game story? <laughs> well, it was just that my mum used to think a really good party game was the tray game. Do you remember that? And it was kind of a bit like being at school. A memory. Yeah, a memory yeah. thing. She'd come in with a tray loaded up with stuff mm. on the tray and you had to remember what it Pelmanism, was. Pelmanism, they sometimes It was called Pelmanism. Pelmanism. Yes, yes, yeah. It was really hard. It used to... I yes. said, what kind of party is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is a rubbish game. It was kind of a game you'd mm. enjoy and probably win. Um, yes. You'd be the boy going, yes. let's play Pelmanism, let's play Pelmanism. Yeah. Because I'm a joyless, mirthless person who finds no pleasure in life or other people. <laughs> right, yeah. Jenny, as you've rightly spotted. I think the concept was taken over when they did uh, you know, beat the clock and all those things passed yes, the person that's right, they yeah. tried to remember. Generation, yeah. Generation, yeah. Generation, Generation game. game. Generation yeah. game. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Thank you for correcting me there. So, that's man, that was another game. That was Brucey, um, both Brucey. It's still they? both Brucey, yes. We gave, we gave. Oh, this <laughs> is another uh, subject which has got a, a connection <laughs> with the last subject, actually. Yes. It's tagging. So, Jenny, Claire, we'd like you to begin on this one. Tell us something about tagging in just a minute, starting now. Well, tagging can be uh, something that graffiti artists do when they scribble on walls and think it's art. I think it's absolute vandalism. They should be um, beaten. Uh, oh, Stephen Challenge. Sorry, I feel, you know, when they think it's art, I think. It's, yes, yeah, there's too many things next to each other. Yeah, and they were close, weren't sort of, they? And my yeah. thumb, I, I... Oh, I feel such a bully. I feel so... <laughs> 54 seconds for you, Stephen, on back. tagging starting now. There's geo-tagging, RFI tagging. The tagging of prisoners has become rather popular and, I would say, controversial too. 
my favourite sort is metadata tagging as used in computers. <laughs> I agree many would find it rather unpleasant, uninteresting, dull, tedious, banal. However, for me, it represents a whole new universe of concepts that are available with computerised databases. It's possible to have... Of <laughs> I do. I'm fascinated to know your challenge. Did he repeat syrup of figs? <laughs> I thought, I thought we had repetition of data. Uh, yes, there was data. Oh, yes. No, no. All right. No, he didn't say it twice. Did he say it twice? No, no. no, no. no, no. <laughs> he, he avoided nearly no. every other word, but he didn't. Right, uh, no. But I agree with you. It was a bit of a sort of a fig, wasn't yeah. it? But, uh, and, but, but um, uh, Stephen, you were interrupted, so you get a point for that. You continue with tagging. 28 seconds starting now. Is memory playing false, or was there on Saturday evenings on ITV some kind of wrestling which involved... Tagging. Two teams. One would touch the other, leap into the ring. Mm. There'd be that pre-arranged... Um, uh, Charles Charles. Were there two rings? Uh, yes. Were there? Oh. No, I don't know. Wrestling. No, no, no wrestling. Oh, what? Oh. No, no. No, no, no. no, no, no. Yeah. Yeah. They're yes? trying very hard, aren't they? Yes. No. No. Yes, it was Sorry, called a Stephen. tag match, actually, Stephen. Mm. That's mm. quite right. Yeah. Oh, and yes. the, it's when you had two different teams where only two players, two wrestlers were in the yeah. ring at the oh, same well, one time. time. And then one would come over, he'd tag him, and then he'd leap yeah, in and take over. That's right. And it's a great uh, yeah. version of uh, Do you wrestling. still miss yeah. those days? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> you and Mrs Mills, do you miss those days? <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, was it you who challenged him? No, I think it was. It was, no, it was, no, it was Charles, wasn't it? Was it? Charles, it was yeah. me. And I think I was right, wasn't I? Was no, I right? Such a long time ago, I'm sure you <laughs> might no, have forgotten. No. <laughs> I do remember you challenged him for a repetition of the word ring. Yes. And he didn't repeat <laughs> no, the word ring. You are so good at this. I've yeah, got yeah. to. I've got I, to keep concentrating all the time. You are so yeah. brilliant, Nicholas Parsons. Uh, <laughs> Oh, keep it up, Charles. We'll get a bonus point. <laughs> Just give us a few bonus points. <laughs> 17 seconds. Still with you, Stephen. Tagging, starting now. Another popular and contemporary form of tagging involves... Um, well, Charles. Surely the contemporary. <laughs> <laughs> I think we give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, smashing. It was... Uh, <laughs> and say yes. It, was, uh, it could be interpreted as a hesitation. On, and, Charles, you have a point. <laughs> and you have tagging. 15 seconds starting now. Tagging was a game we used to play at Christmas in my house. You would put a label on someone's back and then you would run round our vast country estate <laughs> trying to pull the tag off. It was a, a, a pastime. <laughs> oh. Hesitation, I'm afraid. Yes, you yeah. are. So, Paul, you've got in with one second to oh. go. Oh. Make it what seem longer. <laughs> you gain the point, but nothing, not the sympathy of the audience. But it, those are the rules of just a minute, audience. So there we are. Paul, another point to you. One second tagging, starting now. There's a brick wall! <laughs> <laughs> right, so at the end of that round, Paul Merton was speaking as a whistle wind, gained an extra point. He's creeping up on Stephen, who's still in the lead, and they're a few points ahead of Jenny Eclair and Charles Collingwood. As we begin the final round, and Stephen, it's actually your turn to begin. Oh, what a lovely subject. <laughs> Let's see if we can finish on a beautiful way and talk about the subject of beauty. Oh. Starting now. A thing of beauty is an object of truth and a joy forever, so said the poet John Keats, or words to that effect, without the kind of repetition that I would have to use in order properly to cite him. Beauty <laughs> is a platonic form, a paradigm. It can't actually exist, according to that Greek philosopher. However, <laughs> we see the beautiful all around us, if not its abstract uh, manifestation. There are in which... Jenny yeah. challenge. Uh, forms, twice. No, it was a platonic form and then forms... Uh, oh, God, yes. Lord. <laughs> yeah. 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 You see, yeah. Stephen, yes, Stephen does right. actually he's listen right. to what he's saying. Which is... <laughs> so, I, I'm I... listening, but I'm struggling. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's making my buzzer. I've gone all clammy on my buzzer. <laughs> I'm sweaty palms. Have you got a clammy buzzer? Yes. I have, yeah. Your buzzer but, darling, no. you're still contributing, and that's what's so lovely. <laughs> Stephen, an incorrect challenge uh, was, was form and forms. 30 seconds, beauty starting now. La belle et la bête. We've always been slightly obsessed with beauty and its opposite. Kenneth Tynan described it as the awful privilege of beauty. And so it is. To be born with beauty seems to me a kind of primal curse, for it grows away uh, from... Poor challenge. Oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
<laughs> so, you know, Paul, what I'm tempted to do, because the, the response to your remark is, is so astounding, I'm going to give you a bonus point for that. Hey. All right. Yeah, right. And, and it, is a, it is a subtle form of deviation, <laughs> so we, we give you the subject as well. Oh. Well, it doesn't matter. Well, well it, it, wasn't re- it wasn't a complete deviation, but I'm, I'm actually playing the game now in the sense that we've only got five seconds oh, no, to go, yeah. and, and you... Uh, you no, no, you, patronize, and I, I don't patronize think you, Paul. What I did do, you do? I, yeah. I don't... Yeah. <laughs> No, no. I don't think you he can be beaten. Help. I don't oh. think you can be beaten. Sorry. And there's five seconds to go. Oh. And, and I think no, if it goes... all get a chance to join <laughs> in. <laughs> no, sorry, it's 15 seconds to go. So you might help me. Oh. Oh. So there's another chance for you to get more points. 15 <laughs> seconds on beauty, Paul, starting now. Just a minute as a programme contains more than its full share of beauty. Just look at the panel on display here tonight. Stephen. Uh, Jenny Challenge. Well, he's talking rubbish, apart from me. <laughs> The rest of you are twisted little dwarf type <laughs> freaky. Uh, can you can you justify that? Um, well, let's say that this programme has never successfully made it on the telly, and I think there's <laughs> a reason for that. And this panel kind of illustrates that quite adequately. That's all right, Madonna. You said enough. <laughs> I've, uh, I gave the benefit of the doubt to Paul, and he gave, came in on the subject then. There's seven seconds to go. I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt, Jenny, and say, you come in, seven seconds, beauty, starting now. On Beauty is a book written by the authoress Zadie Smith. I have read it and agreed with a lot. <laughs> so, Jenny Eclair was then speaking as a whistle when gained that extra point and has moved forward. Let me give you the final situation. Charles Collingwood gave his usual good value but finished up in fourth place. <laughs> oh, yes, he got all the sympathy as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and just ahead of him, a um, few points ahead further, was the lovely Jenny Eclair, who contributed so much but didn't manage to overtake the other two boys. Uh, Paul finished up in second place, but four or five points ahead of him was Stephen Fry. So we say, Stephen, this week you are the winner. Oh. Right. So it only remains for me to say thank you to these four fine players of this game, Paul Merton, Charles Collingwood, Jenny Eclair, and Stephen Fry. I also thank Sarah Sharp, who's helped me with a score. She'd blown her whistle with great aplomb when the 60 seconds elapsed. We are grateful to our producer, Claire Jones. We're indebted to Ian Messiter, who created this amazing game. So from our audience, from me, Nicholas Parsons, and our panel, thank you, and tune in again the next time we play Just a Minute! Yes! <laughs> <laughs>